Today, we are gonna take this not so cute sweater, but it has so much potential, and we are going to make it adorable. We are gonna make it into a cardigan, and then we're gonna take these rows of designs here, and we are going to gather them up so that way our shirt has some more style to it. So let's take this not so cute sweater and make it super cute. You might be wondering what is gonna happen when you cut into this knit sweater. Isn't it gonna unravel and unfray and become a giant mess? Well, it has the potential to do that. So follow along closely so that way your sweater doesn't turn into an unraveled mess. The first thing we wanna do is some cutting. So grab your scissors. Now this is gonna seem really scary, but what I want you to do is go ahead and just cut right down the center front of your sweater. That's right through the neckline and through the hem. Now, my sweater has a really nice line going down center front, so I know right where to cut on this. But if yours does not have a design, the line going down center front, make sure you fold your shirt in half and chalk out a line going down center front, so that way it turns out symmetrical. Make sure you're just cutting through one layer, and while you're doing it, do not pull it, because if you pull it, it might all unravel. Woo, we did it. That was a little frightening. Now our sweater, it opens up crazy, right? But we can't just wear it like that because it would just shred to pieces. So now that we have the center front cut open, we need to cut the bottom of the sweater into some strips so that way we can gather it up and sew it onto the sweater so we end up with this cute little gathered, almost like peplum top that we're gonna create, but it's going to be a cardigan. Also, I noticed I had some shoulder pads in here and well, I do not want those in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clip out the shoulder pads right now so that way they're not in my way while I'm working with the sweater. Okay, shoulder pads, gone. Get them out of here. We don't need those. Now what we wanna do is do the cutting. So I'm gonna go ahead and follow the grid on the sweater, which is just so nice. I'm really happy this pattern has a grid layout on it. And if yours doesn't, just go ahead and chalk in the lines. So the strips I'm about to cut are about five to six inches in length. Now, this might depend on how long your sweater is. The longer the sweater, the more fabric you can get out of it. So I'm going to be following this grid pattern on the front. Now the back of my sweater does not have a grid pattern. So keep on watching to see exactly what I do. Okay, check that out. We just cut the front of the shirt and opened it up. And now what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and lay this one on top of it as a template, making sure that it lines up at the very bottom. And now I can go ahead and cut through the back layer. I can open that up and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Okay. And now our sweater is cut in two. What the heck did I just do, right? Trust me, it's going to look awesome. If you are enjoying this video so far on how to upcycle your sweater into super cute cardigan with a gather on it, make sure you follow Zoe Anastasia and hit the notification bell so that way you know when all the new videos come out. I put out two videos a week, so much awesome sewing content. And if you're already a follower, thank you so much for following along today. Now let's get back to transforming that sweater. Next, I wanna cut the bottom piece here into a strip right down the middle of this design here. So I wanna end up with two pieces so that way I can serge them together and end up with one really long piece that I can end up gathering to the sweater. We're also gonna have to take in the body of the sweater a little bit because it's a little bit too big on me. So stay tuned to get all those tips and tricks. So right now, let's just cut this in half. Again, I'm following the grid pattern that's on here, but if you don't have a grid pattern on your sweater, no big deal, just chalk it out with your ruler. Excellent, now we have two strips here that we can sew together and gather up. You might be wondering, what am I gonna do with both of these raw edges 
and the bottom of the sweater has a nice finished edge and only one raw edge. Hmm. So before I move any further, I want to serge all the edges that are raw because I don't want to risk this sweater falling apart and unraveling into a million pieces because I actually really do like to design and I want to wear this and I want this project to work. So I'm going to switch my serger over to some black thread and let's finish up any of the raw edges you have on your sweater. Okay, so now we are very carefully going to serge all the raw edges of the sweater. Now you're also gonna to wanna to take into consideration the settings on your serger. So I'm gonna make my stitch length longer and I'm also gonna make my differential feed number bigger as well. So I'm gonna make my stitch length 3.5 and I'm gonna make my differential feed two. Now this might be different for different sergers, so make sure you test it out on your first few inches of serging. Also getting your sweater in it and your serger could be a little tricky. Feel free to lift up the foot just to get it started. And here we go. Now what you wanna look for with your serger is really make sure that the knit is not stretching out and getting wavy. If it's getting wavy, you need to change your differential feed by making it higher. One long strip finished and the edges look beautiful on it. Now I'm gonna move on to the bodice of the sweater starting at center front, working my way around the raw hem. You'll notice I'm not turning the corners when I do this and it's because the knit is so thick and I know I'm gonna go back and finish all the edges with a different technique. There we go, now we are all surged up. Okay, so I've got the sweater all surged up so it's not gonna fall apart into a million pieces on me, but now I need to do some alterations on it before I make it look super cute. I gotta tailor it a little bit. Yours might be perfect, go ahead and move on, right? Um, but if you need to take in the arms, take in the body, make sure you check out my other videos on altering sweaters and taking them in because I've got tons of altering sweater videos and I will put all of the links down below in the description for you. So if you need to alter your sweater further, go ahead and check out the links in my description because you might need to make the sleeve smaller. You might need to make the cuff come up. Maybe you need to take in the body of the sweater. I've got super detailed videos on all of those alterations for sweaters. So make sure you check them out in the description down below. So what I'm gonna do for this one is take in the sleeve and take in the body of it because I've got an extra like four or five inches here on each side and I want the sweater to be fairly fitted in the body because I'm going to be adding all these gathers and ruffles to the bottom so I don't want it to over consume me, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and tailor up the sweater a little bit and then we're gonna put on the finishing details to the sweater. How are we gonna gather up all of that fabric for the bottom of the sweater? Well, well, stay tuned to find out. So I tailored up the sweater so now it fits better in the body and the arms are not as poofy and early 90s, late 80s looking. So now that I have that all tailored up, we are ready to tackle the strips that we are gonna make into a gathered ruffle for the bottom of the sweater. Now what we need to figure out is how are we going to finish the bottom of the strips here? One is finished and one is raw. What I'm thinking we do is, because they're different lengths as well, because this one had a band on it, I'm just gonna cut off this band and finish the edge of it with the serger. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put these right sides together. So that way we have one long strip of fabric that we can gather up on the regular sewing machine and then sew to the sweater. So let's go ahead and chop this off. Let me grab my scissors. Okay, so I'm gonna be cutting off the hem of this sweater. Now you might not have this on yours, and if not, awesome. You probably already surged up this edge that you had. Okay, so I'm 
So this now is garbage or save it for a different project and upcycle it into something else. Okay, so now both of these strips are going to be the same size. So that means we are gonna place them right sides together and sew them together. But you know, I'm looking at this and this doesn't have a design all the way across. So I think what I'd like to do is cut this one in half, serge the edge, finish it, and then attach those to both sides here of this other strip. So that way the pattern is symmetrical on the shirt at the hem. What do you think? Good idea? I think so. That's the fun part about upcycling. You can work on it and just kind of come up with ideas while you create it. So it is like creativity on the fly, which I love. I thrive for that kind of stuff. So to cut this bottom one in half, I'm going to go ahead and fold it. And then I'm just gonna run the scissors up the side of it. Okay. So now I am ready to serge and I'm gonna make this into one giant long strip. So now I have one really long strip that I can gather up and sew to the bottom of that sweater. So I'm going to be using the zigzag gathering method. If you don't know how to do that, make sure you check out my video on it. We'll put a link in the description and a card up here for you. It's my favorite way to gather up fabric because you don't have to worry about basting stitches breaking. It is a game changer. So if you have not tried this, make sure you try it out. And it's great on really thick, heavy fabrics like this. Now I'm doing the zigzag method. I have my sewing machine set to a wide long zigzag stitch and I'm going to take my bobbin thread and my top thread and pull out quite a bit. Maybe, I don't know, just for good measure, like a yard and a half of thread. Now we're going to put our fabric under the foot and now we're going to take the hand wheel, pull it towards us, one rotation, and we wanna bring up that bottom thread. So go ahead and just bring up your bobbin thread. Actually, I should have pulled out all this extra after I did that, but that's okay. Okay, so now we have our thread on top of the fabric, both threads, and we're just gonna zigzag right over it. Again, make sure you check out my video on this if you'd like a detailed explanation. When you get to the end, go ahead and cut. You don't have to backstitch. And now let's take a look at it on the big table. Now that you have that piece all gathered up, it should look something like this. It's a really starting to come together. I'm loving how it looks. So now what we need to do is attach the ruffle to the bottom of the sweater here. So we're gonna be placing right sides together and I'm going to be pinning it all the way around. Now you wanna make sure you leave the very front of it flat for at least the first inch because we're going to be putting a ribbon there later and turning it to the inside to create a facing for our buttons and our button holes. That's right, we are not done yet. So let's keep on working. So right now I'm just gonna pin this all up all the way around the hem. Okay, now I have the entire ruffle pinned on to the bottom of the sweater. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this up now and I'm going to make sure that I'm choosing the proper tension and stitch for such a heavy, thick fabric. Now your sweater could be thinner, it could be even thicker. Don't recommend too much thicker than this. Um, but if you have a thinner fabric, make sure you're choosing the right settings for your thin sweater knit. So if you need help on choosing the right settings for different types of fabric, make sure you check out some videos on that. So I just finished sewing on that gather to the bottom of the sweater and it is looking great. We have totally transformed the style of the sweater, which I just love about upcycling. So our last few steps involve finishing up the edges on the cardigan right now. So what we need to do is finish up the center fronts here so that way we can get some buttons and button holes on the shirt. So what I'm gonna be using is some grow grain ribbon here and I'm going to be sewing it down the front and then flipping it to the inside. You could also just bind the edge in it depending on how thick your grow grain ribbon is. You really have some options for how you want to finish the center front of the sweater. And then for the hem of it, I'm just going to be using a single fold hem to finish off all the way around the bottom after I finish off the center front of the sweater. So let's head over to the sewing machine and finish up the sweater. So I'm going to be placing the grow grain on the top of the sweater. 
and then I'm going to be sewing about a quarter of an inch all the way down with this ribbon. Now you wanna make sure you leave some extra at the top and at the bottom so that way we can finish those ends off after. So I have my ribbon on the right side of the sweater. I've got some extra on the top of the sweater here and now I'm going to sew down right on the edge here. This is a permanent stitch so make sure you're back stitching at the beginning and the end of this. Now that I'm done with that first step on this side, I'm gonna do the other side of my sweater and I'm going to be using a different color of ribbon for this side, just for fun. And I'm gonna start at the bottom of the sweater this time so that way I can keep the bulk of my fabric to the outside of my machine. Back stitch and cut. Next, we need to turn under the ends that we left out here and then take the whole facing of the ribbon here and flip it to the inside and sew it down. So first, what I wanna do is get rid of some of this extra ribbon. I'm gonna leave about an inch of it. Now what I'm gonna do is fold that in so that way the edge up here is nice and clean. So you can see how nice and clean that makes it. And now we're gonna take the whole piece of ribbon and flip it to the inside. And you wanna see a little bit of your sweater on this side, so that way the ribbon isn't popping to the outside of your sweater when you're wearing it. So now we're going to pin that down, if you like, or clip it, and then we're gonna sew on this side of the ribbon over here, so that way it keeps it nice and sturdy and in place and is acting as a facing for us, which is finishing off the edge of the front of the sweater. Going to engage my needle down button, so every time I stop, my needle is gonna be in my fabric. I wanna keep this nice and flat, best I can with having such a bulky sweater. Now this is gonna be real bulky when I get to where the gathered part is, so this is why I wanted you to leave that inch right here nice and flat when you were attaching the gathers. Mm, says it doesn't want to sew too much fabric. Let's see if we can use our hand wheel. There we go. Now before you get to the end, you also want to make sure that you trim off some of the ribbon, leave about an inch, and then take the end of it and fold it up and then fold that in. Back stitch at the end and cut. So now you can see we have a facing here on the inside and now the outside of our sweater is nice and finished. Now I'm going to turn the ribbon under on the side with the black grain ribbon. So again, flip the end of the ribbon in, go ahead, fold it all over to the inside and let's stitch it down. Again, when you get to the end, make sure you're folding in that ribbon and flipping it over. Back stitch and cut. Now what we wanna do is hem the very edge of the sweater here. So I'm just gonna be folding it up about a half inch and stitching it down. And this is called a single folded hem. So my A foot keeps getting caught on the serge. So I'm gonna switch over to my S foot. You get to the end, back stitch carefully over the bulky fabric and cut. We 
We did it. We finished transforming that really ugly sweater into this super cute cardigan with a ruffle at the bottom. I just love the girliness of this sweater. I love that we got to keep the detail on the arms, but we got to make them fitted. We took in the body and made it fitted. And then we added just all of these beautiful gathers around it. But you might be wondering, where did my buttons go, right? So I tried it on and I decided I didn't like the way it was gonna look all buttoned up like a traditional cardigan. So I decided to do just one snap here right at the waist, which I think is perfect because you can wear it with a t-shirt and jeans and then you just have a nice little layer to keep you warm. So I'm gonna try it on and let's check out how it looks on. Get that hair out of the way. And there we go. Let's snap it up and check that out. It is so cute. I love all the ruffles and the gathers in it. It is just such a fun sweater. And remember what it looked like? It looked like that sweater before. And now it looks like this. Thanks so much for watching Sewy Anastasia today. If you have any questions on how to transform your big ugly sweater, do a super cute cardigan with a ruffle on it, leave it down below and I'd love to help you with your project. You can also sign up for virtual lessons and I can help you no matter where you are in the world. That's pretty cool now, isn't it? And if you're in Chicago, you can obviously come into my design studio and take classes with me in person. So make sure you check that out at SewyAnastasia.com. If you enjoyed this video today, give it a thumbs up, give it some applause, and leave a comment down below. I would love to know what you thought of this sweater upcycle. And I'm always looking for new ideas. So what kind of sweater upcycles do you want to see? Because I would love to create them for you. And if you're not already a subscriber to Sony Anastasia, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when all the new videos come out. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for watching today. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and TikTok, and all those social media websites, make sure you check them out so that way we can stay connected and creative together. And I would love to see your projects, so make sure you email them to me or tag me in them, so that way I can repost them and share them with everyone else, because we all love a little creative inspiration now and then. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.